Greetings. As part of our weekly roundup on trucks, this week we take a look at what's going on with Nikola and its new factory and truck on the move. We also take a look at mega charger news from Tesla with clients. And finally, we take a look at what's the status of the trucks and what are they are the prototype trucks that are, have been delivered and what are they doing? This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Thanks once again for joining us. If this is your first time on our channel, please take the time to like and subscribe. If you uh, have come back, uh, welcome back. Uh, also, please make sure you hit the bell icon so you don't miss anything. Just to review, on a weekly basis now, every Saturday at noon Eastern Time, again, noon Eastern Time, we've now begun doing a weekly live cast and look forward to getting a chance to interact with you or interact with our subscribers. So please put that on your calendar and look forward to an opportunity to speak with you next week. The previous week's session on February 3 is now on our channel for you to take a, a view of and any questions, etc. that you'd like to share or add to the dialogue would be appreciated. The first thing I'd like to cover today is that I thought that uh, Nikola was in a sort of the death spiral. Uh, as you know, Nikola has considered Tesla's semi to be a fraud and stated so in tweets, etc., but hadn't really delivered much to show that it wasn't in fact a fraud. So, number one, I've included images as well as I'll put a link to the video of the truck actually in motion from Nikola. And I want to congratulate that I'm getting something done versus a beautiful looking truck that wasn't moving, I think is terrific. The second thing I'd like to mention is that Nikola has officially announced that they'll be building a billion dollar plant in Arizona to uh, provide a production facility for their truck. This is kind of interesting and it's all part of the mystery on Nikola and what's really going on. Uh, they had a 20 city tour where they evaluated where they might want to build uh, their plant, and they elected to build that plant in Arizona. One would assume they got tax benefits and other things that drew them there. And according to the CEO, they're moving their headquarters and R&D facilities to uh, Arizona or the Phoenix area in order to uh, get production moving. I find... Uh, I've found Nikola to be a complete mystery for quite a while in terms of what they're doing and why. And this is another round of it. Um, it's very strange because um, they're a Utah-based company. You know, they purchased a energy services company, not unlike Solar City in, U in Utah, um, and have been doing a lot of work there. So I find it strange that they decided to bail out of their home state and move on, uh, number one. Number two... Um, you know, the list of don't make senses from this company is amazing. Uh, they're talking about building their hydrogen, uh, sort of fueling stations in a large network across the country to support large trucks. And it's a good idea, but it takes a long time to build those plants. And it's a long time before the trucks will be ready to use them. So it's a lot of capital put on the street if you don't have any vehicles to use those products. The... You know, I guess my next on it is just the fact that um, Nikola announced that they're hiring a company called Fitzgerald to actually build the trucks. So they are not going to be building the trucks so themselves. So I was kind of surprised to learn that, you know, if you're only going to be having an outside firm build your trucks for you, you know, is there a need to move your R&D facilities to, and et cetera to that where that plant is going to be? So... Um, you know, I think the whole thing just seems very strange in terms of how it's being done. And then the final strange point I'd like to cover on what's going on with Nukola, because we don't know what the deal is, is that you'll notice that all the footage of their initial truck 
had, you know, a number of executives from different companies there with the truck. When it came time to the running footage, there's nobody there except for, uh, you know, uh, wide open spaces, the truck, and uh, it's driving along. And as you see with a tra trailer behind it, which I thought was really weird. Now, let me flip over to where we are with Tesla in terms of news this week and, and information now. Some, there's a bunch of little news items that popped up. One is the fact that Tesla is now doing a contest for folks who'd like to get on the test track at the headquarters and sort of race uh, the, the truck or the, the trailer part of the truck anyway. And part of that is that if you in, in, introduce the largest number of folks to the Tesla newsletter, uh, you actually get to uh, get on the track with the new Tesla truck. You know, interesting contest item. Um, I don't know how helpful that is to anybody's life, but I guess it sounds like fun. And if you want to go for it, do. The second thing that uh, comes to mind is... Uh, the whole discussion of the mega charger. I've been kind of preparing for mega charger discussions for, for a bit. And one of the things that's come up is the fact that um, the mega charger is a new device being developed by Tesla for customers use with its trucks. So the big discussion in the news is that Tesla is going to be working with uh, buyers of the truck to install these and I think that kind of makes sense. Um, it, it, I didn't really think it was news because those companies couldn't just build something randomly and hope it would work spec-wise with Tesla. And because there's a lot of new parts involved, Tesla is definitely going to have to be a key player in how these things are delivered. I'm intrigued because we're not going to find out what the answer to this is, but uh, there are different types of customers. For example, Pepsi, Budweiser, Walmart, etc. In the case of Walmart and all the other grocery store customers, those guys already have huge electric uh, relationships to bring power to their facilities and at great prices given the volume they're buying. So I'm fascinated because I think the degree of activity Tesla has in terms of interfacing with those customers is going to be uh, dependent upon the degree to which they're large buyers of electricity and therefore able to get economies of scale without Tesla's help in that process. As you know, Tesla's offered seven cents per kilowatt hour, uh, which is pretty reasonable. Evidently, cost uh, for the, that power is four cents, so it seems like a pretty aggressive price designed to get those folks off the dime. The funny thing that comes up, and one of the things that I've been watching and trying to understand with the mega chargers is if we look at a supercharger, you're required to have six vehicles, and they'll put a $1.5 million supercharger at your facility, let's say at your business. Now, because the mega chargers are drawing four times the power, one would think that's a $5 million facility that it takes to move it along. And there's a huge, like, unknown question that's popped up, which is that if you look at the order stream, there are actually entities that are ordering one or two vehicles at, let's say, $200,000 a piece. And this kind of doesn't make sense because why would somebody order two vehicles if the charging station is going to cost $5 million? And so either they're planning on just buying two vehicles and that's it, or the order sizes uh, that reflect uh, new entities being able to put in those chargers is actually much larger and the two vehicles may be the early, early part of the delivery and the rest will be down the road. But, you know, I don't, I don't think it makes any sense to, to build a $5 million facility for $400,000 worth of trucks. It, it, uh, the numbers don't add up. And so I think the reality is something else. But uh, you don't get to find out what the answer to that is unless the customers decide to tell you what the answer is. And I think that's fine. Um, Tesla really does have a monopoly at this end of the truck business. And so I don't think it's, um, you know, I don't think it's a, a huge, huge deal. Um, I'm uh, The other thing I was covering in this session is sort of where are the trucks and what are they doing? So I've decided to include some uh, images of both the city of Sunnyvale as well as um, what I call Highway 84 or Kings Mountain in uh, the Silicon Valley area. So basically, um, 
the Pacific Ocean is on one side of the mountains, then there's some mountains, and then there's Silicon Valley. And I have images that I'll show over my shoulder of kind of the general area. The process that Tesla used with the Roadster is kind of being used with the truck, whereby you have different engineers sort of putting the vehicle through its paces. And much like, I guess, Stuttgart, which I haven't been to or seen, you have a situation where you have a flat area where the work is being done, you know, in a large uh, warehouse facility. And then after, you know, the prototypes are ready, they're put on sort of constant rotation where different managers or engineers will drive that vehicle up into the hills and mountain above, sort of above the factory to sort of, uh, you know, continuously give feedback on how things were done. And, you know, anything noted to be an issue can be repaired and the cycle continues. The other part uh, of this that's going on that was noted by several buyers is the fact that Tesla has actually been inviting uh, small and large buyers to go on these runs and also to help develop some of the specs on the trucks that will be used. So, um, so bottom line is, you know, the trucks are in motion. They are being tested once the, you know, there's a solid sort of body of data of performance there. The next stage is for them to start uh, hauling parts between uh, Tesla factories, both the Gigafactory and the Fremont plant. And, you know, that's when we'll see a lot more spy shots probably by summer uh, of the trucks sort of climbing the Sierras because that's a, a lot more, a lot bigger challenge than Kings Mountain, which is sort of the big mountain that's above the factory. And it really gives a chance to uh, collect more data and show the efficacy of the truck to uh, both Tesla and to its customers. Now, I'm kind of intrigued because um, there's a truck run that goes between, let's say, Reno and a place called Truckee, California. And if a truck, instead of going 45 miles an hour, can make that run at 65, there's a lot of time saved, etc. So I mention this because um, this is one of the routes that is going to be taken by the trucks coming out of the Reno facility heading towards Fremont. And uh, the the relationship to the mountains is one of the big issues that truck or, or delivery companies have in terms of performance needed uh, to, to sort of move forward this whole conversation. So um, I'm sort of intrigued by what's going to go on with this. I, I think it'll be fine. Uh, the bigger worry I have is making sure that the Gigafactory gets to scale so that the truck can be um, well above break-even into that uh, 30 to 50 percent profit margin that Tesla needs in order to go forward efficiently. And as I've shared, I think March 1st is that tipping point on scale for batteries coming out of the Gigafactory. Uh, and we have the test facilities of those batteries in the form of the Model 3s that are on the road that are providing data on how that battery pack is performing uh, because it is brand new and does need to be tested to make sure everything's solid before you roll out huge numbers of them and start moving them into strenuous situations like uh, a truck space. So I think, uh, you know, our next uh, video will take a look at the relationship between BYD and Tesla and how that pricing is working. I think you guys will find it really interesting. Um, again, uh, Nicola is still alive. Uh, they're doing some things impressively, surprisingly. Um, hope you enjoy the video. Uh, you know, Tesla is definitely in the process of testing and preparing for the delivery of the truck next year. And, you know, as they're building out the new manufacturing facility uh, and then testing the trucks at the same time, I think the game changer that the trucks are will really come to, to bear at that point. Look forward to any and all comments. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Tschüss, mach's gut, over, le hit road, hoda hafez. And walk good.